hello and welcome to this short tutorial where i take you through how to use your system from start to finish let's dive right into it first of all you need to uh, log into the system but as it stands now if you just um, copy it on your machine for the first time when you launch it you should see something like this i just created a copy of it so it looks like it's on a new machine so you should see something like this it wouldn't prompt you to log in so you have to enable as as it stands now macro which is holding the source code that is controlling the entire system has been disabled so with that you can't use the system as it is so you have to enable the macro to be able to use all the features without any problem so to do that you have to enable the editing here so you click on this <coughs> from there you proceed and then enable content from there you be from the, now macro is enabled so all the features are now up and running so you just have to enter your username and then your password to log in into the system so let me just enter the username if i can remember sorry Zach. One something like this, sure, and then the password, something like this. Now, so the moment you log in quickly, you just have to be on the home page here. So, all these are links that are linking to other sections of the system. So, as it stands now, you are going to start everything from a clean slate. I haven't entered anything. So, I'm going to walk you through how you enter your, your items for the first time, how you do your transaction, and keep track of everything. So, to start with, after logging in, you just have to go and center. So, you click on this, and this will bring you to this page where you click on this from there. You then proceed to the form command center. So, let's click on it now. So, here we have everything on a clean slate. Everything is now zero, zero. There is nothing going on here no transaction no nothing with this we have date range here where we can choose date range in case you've done a lot of transactions and you would want to reverse the history maybe from 20 uh, from the first um, january 2021 that is the early uh, early this year if from maybe start using the system from that time till this time and you want to check the history of your transaction being it purchase sale profit inventory quantity inventory amount and all that you just have to choose the date range from that time to the time you would want to check on that so from there in choosing the the, the start date you choose here maybe 20th february 2021 so you choose that here and then to maybe 4th uh, april 2021 you choose that here as the end date the moment you do that the transaction history will be displayed here for you to uh, use it the way you would want to use it for so that is that so for now we haven't entered any so there's no need to choose any date frame so we can refresh this and then we are good to go now let's proceed and then trigger our product master where we can enter the product in our shop from clean slate so you click on this and then this will also open this particular form for you to enter the names of your product so let's assume in this shop we sell maybe shoes bags and all that right okay so uh, let's let me try see if i can get some names of those things let's let's say, let's say uh, uh, type of shoes like let's say what let me use a capital letter you know, wap that is the name of the product wap uh, men shoe something like that then the purchase price maybe you bought it at 200 cities and you would want to sell it at maybe 250. so then from there you proceed and then you add it's not added to the system and this item is maybe uh what i don't even know names of these things so you have to help me with that so let's say uh, uh oh, sports uh, let's say okay nike sportswear like you can take the names of the items on the on, on the on the on the various items you can just take their names and then enter into the system so that is that nike sports boots or whatever maybe the biggest price is let's say you bought it at 300 cities so you won't sell it at maybe 380 then you add it to the system so all the items in the shop into the system so you proceed and do that and the next one is maybe women bag something like that because i saw something like that there remember maybe the name of the bag maybe leather i don't even know so you can i don't know leather type maybe 
the purchase price maybe bought it at maybe two hundred cities you would want to sell it at maybe 250. so i think this will cite as an example on how you can enter the names of products and the purchase price as well as the sale price into the system so the in case you make any mistake here you would want to edit the purchase price or sale price you just have to double click on it let's assume here the what men shoe the price you bought it is not actually 200 maybe you bought it at 300 you accidentally enter 200 so you can edit it as a 300 then you would want to sell it at what 350 so this is how you do correction so after that you don't click on add but rather you click on what so that is that when you are done with this so you enter the names of all the items in your shop with their purchase price and sale price into the system when you are done you can then close this the way you close this you have them here but for now you can see that the available stock here is now zero 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 there is one unique thing about this system is in such a way that the systems that are limited in stock always come to the top so as it stands now everything is now zero 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 so because we haven't we assumed that we haven't started any transaction yet so now we, let's start um, with the transaction aspect so to do that you click on this and you have all the items you've entered into the product master sheet here so first of all the first one is the warp men's shoe right now the quantity how many pieces did you buy that type of shoe how many pieces are they maybe you bought them maybe there are 20 pieces of their that same shoe then the transaction type is what pitches that is you, you buying them from a different store for you to come and sell you bought 20 pieces as the quantity and then the price the one is for 300 cities so we add it to the system as they Done. the second item so you can see that it has been updated here what menu is now 20 and then remember so zero zero because we haven't entered it yet so we go to the second one like sports boot <laughs> so the quantity how many pieces do you buy maybe it's of low demand so you bought like 10 so transaction for now is purchase because you have bought it you haven't yet sold it out you are now entering it into your system so and then price per unit the first and then one of them the third and so you just go ahead and then you add it normally you add you can see that the inventory quantity is updated the pages the amount the money used to buy all your items are also updated here and the inventory amount this is the total amount together with your profit you'll be earning on the on the items are also updated here total number of inventory quantity the total number of items in the shop will also be here so as it stands now we have 10 boots 20 uh, shoes so making 30 that is why you're seeing it here like that so let's proceed down there the next one is going to be <coughs> women uh, bag the leather type right maybe you bought them like uh, this five for you to come and give a trial on how it's going to be so transaction is pages so uh, price per one is um, 200 and i said it's right so you did that so from there you proceed and then you add it the moment we add it you see so the one with the least number will be at the top so if let's assume the what men shoe is getting to finish maybe it's left with just one you see it being at the top prompting you that hey you need to go for more of this type of shoes to come and sell because it is of high demand and something like that stuff so now you are done entering your item into your system so now let's assume a user comes to buy something right what have they come to buy maybe the person comes to buy something like uh, maybe the warp men's shoe which is of high demand the person comes to buy them in bulk right? so it's a product which one is you warp men's shoe how many did the person buy but the person bought just say uh, 10 of them 10 have they seen it so 10 so from there you proceed and then choose the transaction sale you have sold to the person so just be watching here profit and then the sale the when i click on add the sale will be updated profit will be updated so let's see that so on uh, the sales of uh, 10 of uh, what's the name what men shoe you've got a profit of what five hundred and cities and this is what you've sold so that is that so and so now you are going to issue receipt let's say the person the same person bought uh let's say women back three so we choose that here yeah, women back the other type quantity the person bought three so the uh, transaction type is sale so you add it so just watching the the, the sale and the profit it should be updated that is that now you need to issue receipt or invoice to your user right so this is how we add a um, purchase transaction as well as sales transaction if you want to check just your purchase transaction what you've purchased click on this and all the purchase will be displayed here 
if you want to see only sales transaction you click on this and only sales will be displayed here if you want to see all you click on this and all will be displayed here if you want to see uh, uh, maybe from so, uh, one day to another you can choose the date range and everything will be displayed accordingly for you without any problem without any issue so that is that so now we are done with this you want to go and issue receipt don't forget the user bought um, what men should turn and bought female leather back three so we need to go and then issue invoice to the user right so let's do that so we can save this and proceed then close this and click somewhere here and then click on this and come back home so let's go to invoice so here we're going to issue invoice to the user but before you give something uh, the, the, the issue invoice to the user the user's number name and then uh, the, the address must be on the invoice right so let's do that so to do that let's quickly go back home we go to customer details so you click on this and add the user's name so what is the user's name the user's name is maybe Muntaka Mubarak let's assume that Muntaka Mubarak so the address is maybe Muntaka Street I don't know I'm just guess whatever so you take the person's address whatever you take it in the phone number you take it some random numbers i'm just putting that in the second address if it is there you can go ahead and take it whatever and the email address of the person you can go ahead and then add it to it then when you are done you click on what add and save so the user is now added to your database now so now when you go to issue invoice you'll be able to see the name of the user and then issue invoice accordingly so let's quickly go back home so click on this go back home and now you go to invoice so we are going to issue receipts to our first user so to do that you click here and you click this drop down arrow so the number of users you have in your database where i've just entered montaka mubarak all the names will appear here in this drop down menu here so you just choose the user's name so you see the when you choose the name the address and then the phone number appears without any problem so when you are done the user comes to buy what so you click on this arrow here so the list of items the user came to buy men what's the name what shoe right so but before we even do this we need to go back to uh, the items database and then update description of the items that the, the user bought and then the quantity before we come here and then update that as well so to do that let's quickly go back home again so we go to items and product so we click on update list so what item has the person bought so you can just click here the, the person bought what uh, what men shoe right you choose it how many so description of th those type of shoes maybe what men shoe you can add it what men sorry so what men shoe maybe black black of that type maybe five then brown as well five something like that description of the items right quantity that in all oh, the person bought 10 and then the sale price the sale price let's see something here by default the sale price is already there for one which is 350 so we don't have to worry about that so from the proceed and then click on what update so update successfully so you are done with the update so with that you can see that everything is now updated without any issue let me just let me confirm this once again in the description of the item you click on this uh, okay it's like it's not updated let me let me let me check that one so what men should so let's check it here what men sorry what men should right? they search for it okay then when you search for it the price comes here then the quantity the body is worth 10 now description so i suggest we go with this you search for the name of the item make sure the way you spell it here so you spell it here like that and then you can you click on search and then it pops up description maybe what men should the black type is five comma and then the brown type as well it's also maybe five and when you are done you click on updates and then it's updated accordingly so it's here quantity is 10 what means you black five brown five and the next one is uh, the person bought women leather back the leather type right so you search for it so you type women back sorry women back which type the leather uh, type right so you click on search <laughs> And then it pops up quantity is just three 
So you describe the item based on the color. Maybe uh, you can type women, whatever, leather bag. Sorry, brown, mm -hmm. brown color, whatever. Describe the item. Look at the item and describe it here. Should in case the person send it and bring it back, you can check on description and know that this is exactly what is sold to the user. That is why we try to add description of the item into the invoice without any problem, without any stress, without any issue. So that is that. Now let's proceed and then update it. So we click on update and it's updated accordingly as well. So we click on OK. Then we have this as well, updated quantity three. So from here, you can then go back home and then go to invoice now. So you click on invoice. So here, you're going to issue invoice to the user. Now the name is already, they've already selected the name without any problem. So we click on this. Then you choose what men should. They may choose it description and then the quantity pops up and then the total price for the 10 pops up. And the second item is what? Women at the back, they choose it. Then description, quantity, price, total price. Now this is what the person has to pay in all. If you have any tax the person has to pay, it should be added. If you don't have any tax, maybe if there is nothing like tax payment or whatever, then you can let me know so that we take that off without any problem. So I think we can do it with that. It's not needed. So I'll be doing away with this so that we just know that the person has to pay what he has bought. The, the, the price based on what the person has. So after that, you can click on save and update. Then it is saved. So from there you proceed and then you have to get some little cute printer, connect it to your laptop and then after that you click on print. And print will be affected. So you can see my printer is already connected. So you see it popping up here trying to print something. So that is that. The way you print it, it's it's printed and then you can whatever there's issue with your customer without any problem, without any issue, without any stress. So that is how we use the system. So after this, you can quickly go back and then go to invoice. Now, if you have more, so you can see that we are ready to take the second invoice. So the invoice number is one for the first transaction you've made on the system. So the second person comes to buy your issue invoice, it comes number two. If the first user comes to comes back for any issue, you can quickly click here and then you type the invoice number. The moment you click outside here, the history the, 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 that contains the person's transaction will pop up here. Then you go through it. If there is anything you have to rectify with the person to prove to the person that this is what I sold to you, this is what you took from me, this is what you paid and all that, you can see everything here without any problem, without any stress. So I think um, we are done. So let me quickly go back home. So here and other sheets, I don't think there is any need to even switch to them. You don't have anything to do there. So but then should in case you would want to clear anything, you can just go to sell pictures here or whatever. Product master here we have it here. If you want to clear this issue, you can just select them then click on remove. Be careful with the selection. I don't even expect you to even come here. The moment you've been using the system, it's not needed. But should in case something happens so to avoid any issue the moment you get a system you have to create copy of it so if you have it in a folder like this for you to start using this one just right click and then you copy it and then create a different folder like new folder like this you can give it any name and you open it then control v you paste it and then you have copy of the system inside here so even if you are using this one and something happens and you would want to change it you can quickly come for this copy so if you want to use this one as well you can also copy it and then paste it inside another folder use it and you have this one to empty sitting down for you so that that is how you can manage the system without any problem without any stress so i would want to end here with this short tutorial and if there is any question you would want to ask for clarification you can go ahead and do that and i'll assist thank you very much for watching and bye for now